Hello, folks. If you, if you think I, I've worn the same shirt for the last 24 hours or 48 hours, uh, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, these, these little diversions are being filmed one after the other, even though they are being posted on different days. It's not that I didn't feel like changing my shirt, but I wear the same shirt day after day. You remember the words that I used the last time, the words of Martin Luther, the Bible is alive, it speaks to me, it has feet, it runs after me, it has hands, it lays hold on me. I love to read the Bible, in particular the Gospel stories. Last time we spoke about Mary Magdalene going early on that Easter Sunday morning to the tomb only to discover that Jesus' body was not there and that wonderful encounter she had with the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Some of the disciples were there as well. But later that evening, that same day, they're all sitting behind locked doors, we read, for fear of the Jews. They knew that Jesus was alive, but they're still terrified out of their skulls about what the Jewish authorities might do to them. And just pause there, behind locked doors, for fear of what might happen. Now, let's be honest, sometimes even we as Christian men and women sit behind locked doors. They can be doors of limiting assumptions, things that we have decided about our lives and about the world. Invariably, they're not always true, but we sit behind these limiting assumptions they are like a door shut in our faces, and we're afraid. Now, what do you do when you are surrounded or you've filled your heart and your head with these limiting assumptions about yourself? It could be fear about who you are or what might happen. Uh, all manner of insecurities, which when looked at carefully, or you sit down with somebody whom you trust and you think through them, you realize that, in fact, probably most of them are simply not true, and yet they have that seriously limiting effect upon the way you think and the way that you live. And then, whilst they're all there behind locked doors, Jesus appears. You can imagine, like, where did he come from? The door's still closed, and there is Jesus amongst them. And his first words are peace. To the fearful, he says, peace. Now we live in anxious times. A lot of people are feeling very insecure about the future. Don't let those fears become locked doors. Don't give way to fear. Just hear the story of Jesus appearing there and saying to them, what? Peace. Peace. It didn't mean that the Jews weren't necessarily going to knock on the door. It didn't mean an outward change of their circumstances necessarily. But it did mean that they were able to face the future and their lives there and then with an added strength, knowing that the Lord Jesus was there with them. And then we read that they were overjoyed in just a matter of moments when the penny dropped, when within themselves they they discovered that those doors were not obstacles to the future, that they need not fear. Jesus says, peace be, peace be with you. And their hearts were overjoyed. And then what did Jesus do? We read that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God's empowering presence in our lives. So think about that story. You'll find it in the Gospel of John chapter 20. Think about it. Put yourself in that upper room. Ask yourself, what is holding you back? And just maybe you'll have a sense of Jesus coming to you and saying, we're in this together. We can face the future. Remember that old hymn, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. God bless you. We'll chat again soon.